it's Yasmin here with another episode of season one and a half of the Main Demonology podcast. Uh, we're not really back for season two until the new moon and the new moon won't take place until next week, I think it is. Um, but the astrology at the moment is kind of cutting us a break at long last. So I thought, you know what, why don't I just get on here and, you know, just give you a little idea of the way the astrology is panning out. If you've been doing it tough, help could be at hand. I know a lot of people have been having a pretty rough time lately. The astrology at the moment is pretty much off the scale. Uh, it's because we're getting ready to have such big astrological changes. I think Saturn's going to change signs. Pluto's going to change signs. Before too long, we'll have more eclipses. It's just like thing is, I guess it's when so much is happening energetically in the skies, it's a little bit like being in a tumble dryer. You know, you're just spinning around and around and you're not quite sure when the cycle's going to finish. Well, we know when the cycles are going to finish in astrology because, you know, astrology tells us that. Um, but, you know, until they finish, it can be a really, really intense period. Uh, it can be a time where you just feel like you don't know which way is up. Things you thought you'd sorted out start to go a little bit crazy again. Things you thought you'd mastered, you realized you haven't mastered. You know, people you thought were on your side tend to be turn out to be giving you a tough time and so on and so forth. Looking ahead, it's actually going to be in March that uh, Saturn's going to move into Pisces on March the 7th. And then we've got uh, Pluto moving into Aquarius on March the 23rd. So, you know, really, really big energetic changes coming. And as I said, that's why now could feel a little bit tumultuous. The thing is, when the astrology is tough and therefore life here on Earth is more challenging, it is all happening for a reason. And as I said, the astrology this week is actually quite good, but I just want to kind of frame all this and sort of spit it all out now in a week where I can turn around and go, but it's not going to be like that this week, hopefully. Tough astrology isn't just sent to test our patience. Tough astrology happens because sometimes we need to learn a few life lessons. And quite honestly, one thing that astrology has taught me is that life goes in cycles. Okay, so that's one thing to be aware of. Sometimes things are going really well and you're like, well, I've got this thing down. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to be fine. And then all of a sudden something comes along and you go through a difficult cycle. Those difficult cycles are when we grow as people because we see how we respond. And, uh, you know, there's always lessons when the astrology is tough. We're supposed to be learning lessons. And the more we refuse to learn our lessons, the tougher those lessons become and they come thicker and faster, slapping us in the face. So, you know, that's what happens. All the rough things we go through, we actually go through, dare I say, for a reason. Because our soul incarnated at this time, in this place, to learn some lessons. Our souls learn lessons as we move through our incarnations. So whenever tough things are going on, try and think, what is my lesson here? We are here to evolve. And I've been all over the place in the past few months, and I can't remember where I heard this. I went to Findhorn in Scotland, which was amazing, and I've just had a week in India at the ashram that I go to there, which was amazing, and now I'm in Sedona in Arizona, and it's amazing, like probably three of the most spiritual places on the planet I've managed to cover off in the last few weeks. And it was in one of those places that I that I heard someone say something which I have said in the past, but it was someone kind of spiritually, more, more spiritually evolved than me who said it. And I thought, yes, I agree. I'm so glad you say that because I've been saying that for a very long time. And it's this, it's all very well being able to meditate under perfect conditions. And as I speak, I'm desperately trying to remember who said this and where I heard it, but I just can't. So I'll try and stop thinking about that. 
Whoever it was, they were saying, you know, it's all very well to be able to sit around and and meditate perfectly, you know, if you're in a cave, for example. Sorry, my computer's making noises. But what happens when your computer starts making noises? What happens if you've got children running around shouting? What happens if there's a building site next door? You know, like really spiritual growth happens when we can find our center, like, for example, meditate in the midst of chaos. So it's all very well going off to live in a cave and saying, right, I'm going to go and meditate in the cave for 12 months. And I'm sure that would be a profound experience. and You probably have some incredible insights. But really, it's it's sort of the analogy I'm trying to draw is, you know, when life is tumultuous, but you can still find your center, that is when you are really doing the work. And that is when you are really starting to move towards some kind of self-mastery because it's life's challenges that make us grow. So, you know, um, apparently in the army, I might have this wrong, this is hearsay, but apparently in the army they have this saying, uh, embrace the suck, embrace the suck, which I think means, you know, when it's when you're in a tent at four o'clock in the morning and it's raining and the rain's coming in through the seams and you're getting wet and and cold and, you know, but you're doing your, your job, you embrace the suck. And in a way, you know, sometimes in life, if we can embrace the suck and go, okay, this is such a difficult period, but what am I learning What am I learning as a person? How is my soul evolving? How is my character being built? If you can do that in the midst of a crisis, so much the better, so much the better. So all that said, sometimes we do need a little bit of respite. You know, if life was just always hard, 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 suck, 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 just nonstop difficult, We'd probably all just give up and jump off, um, you know, the nearest high thing, wouldn't we? But life isn't. Life goes in cycles and sometimes it's lovely and sometimes it's difficult and sometimes it's kind of just floating along. This week, there is a good chance to have a nice, if that I may use that word, that four-letter word, to have a nice time. The astrology this week is what you might call kind of good. It's kind of nice. It's kind of pleasant. Um, Let's start off with, well, for one thing, um, we've got Valentine's Day on Tuesday and the um, prevailing aspect on Valentine's night is actually amazing. It's a link between Venus and Neptune. Now, Venus is the planet of love and Neptune is the planet of poetry and soulmates. But I have to tell you, it's also very much a planet that's on the spectrum. And at the other end of the spectrum, we've got um, disappointment and deception. Now, so if you are uh, if you're with someone that you know is your absolute soulmate and you feel absolutely marvelous about the whole thing and it's all going really, really well, then um, Valentine's Day or Valentine's Night this year is probably going to be quite nice. Excuse me. If you're involved with someone that you know you can't trust, then you probably need to ask yourself why. And Valentine's Day could be uh, suck and you're going to have to embrace the suck and ask yourself why you've got yourself into this situation. But let's look on the positive. Basically, Venus, the planet of love meeting Neptune this week, can really mean love that lifts you higher, love that inspires you, love that makes you feel like a better person or love that helps someone else be a better person or love that just fills you up, fills you to the brim with good feelings and good thoughts. You know, just avoid the people you know you need to avoid and everything should be fine. Um, Also, actually, on the 16th of February, now that is Thursday, so we'll be feeling it all week, uh, but we get our annual sun Saturn conjunction. So this suggests to me that if you do have your rose-colored glasses on and if you are pretending to yourself that your love life is fine when it's really, really not, well, on the one hand, that's kind of admirable because we, you know, we need to look on the good side. We need to look on the bright side. Um, But, you know, it takes two to tango. And if the person you're with really isn't happy, it may well be that this week, this Valentine's week is the week you're going to have to face up to that and deal with it. Okay. I hate to say it. That said, let's again look on the bright side. Saturn is the planet of commitment, okay? So with Venus 
meeting Neptune just before, or just after Valentine's Day with that sort of energy around for Valentine's night and then Saturn conjunct Saturn, it could also be, you know, like a record number of proposals <laughs> because, you know, what is marriage? It's a commitment. Um, of course, nobody's ever going to research anything like that, so we'll never know. But, you know, it can go either way. Either it's going to be, oh, my God, I've been kidding myself. This guy, this guy or this girl is just, you know, untrustworthy and it's time for me to wake up and, you know, smell the reality that's been stuffed up my nose um, or it could well, or it could be this is the person of my dreams and I want to make a commitment to them that lasts long time so there we go um, on the 18th of February which is Saturday we actually get two uh, astrological things of note we have Mercury the planet of communications making a harmonious link to Jupiter the planet of confidence so that actually means on friday if you happen to be um if you happen to be doing a presentation or anything like that at work or traveling for that matter uh really nice stars for you um really good time for having conversations see your friends have some fun ring a friend up and say do you want to catch up um and then on also on the 18th, we have the sun moving into the sign of Pisces, which is the last sign of the zodiac. So that means all our Pisces friends will be having their birthdays. Uh, it also means we're coming to the end of this current solar cycle because then the sun will move back into Aries. And when that does, we get the astrological new year and then we get the new moon in Aries, which for me is the absolute astrological new year. So, you know, the energies are shifting this week, but they are, I know I probably slightly you know bamboozled you by saying the energies are really good this week apart from if you're involved with someone really untrustworthy you might get a, a wake-up call or rather you might get hard facts shoved up your nose you know at the end of the day we have to face facts sometimes and can be a good thing to face facts it, let's face facts it can be a good thing to face facts <laughs> anyway finishing the week off we actually get one more really nice alignment which is venus trining sorry sex dialing pluto Venus planet of love, sex darling Pluto. It's like the uh, it's like a last chance sort of you know unexpected last chance to get something right to do with love or money. That's the nineteenth, so that's going to be Sunday uh, because they're both on the um, the anoretic degree, the last degree of the sign. Venus is at twenty nine Pisces, Capricorn. Sorry, uh, Pluto is at twenty nine Capricorn, and. Uh, Oh, you know, just when you might have thought everything was completely done and dusted and over forever, it could well be there is a resurrection and something that you thought wasn't going to work out is going to work out beautifully. So, you know, all in all, it's a very interesting week. Um, I really hope that you will think about what I said at the start of this podcast that, you know, when times are tough, we can evolve because if you do end up getting the sort of the, the what's that saying? The the sharp end of the stick is that what they say if you get the sharp end of the stick you know then try and embrace the suck and try and think well at least now I know at least now I know and I can go about my business safe in the knowledge that I know what I need to know anyway I know I've been a bit rambling but I hope I've helped you understand a little bit about what's going on and I'll be back uh, in better shape making more sense next week as we start uh, we end season 1.5 and we go into season two of the mainly monology podcast thanks for listening speak to you next week